Hello, it's me again. We're going to do an educational video on how I time chainsaws, particularly with cylinders. So we have a 660 Pro. It'll be available on bluesaws.com shortly. Keep an eye out there. I'm sure Scott and those guys will have that up eventually. The tools that I use, I've got a digital degree wheel from HMWF LLC, Dino Joe, also here on YouTube. I tried the wheels. This, once you get the learning curve down on this, so much simpler. Uh, and I've been using it for at least a year now, and I think I've got some tricks that might be helpful. So, cylinder is bolted into place exactly where it is, right? Torqued and all that jazz. And we want to know where the intake, the exhaust, and the transfers are opening and closing at. So, a lot of times I used to always find top dead center and go from there. I wanted to start looking at duration and how that played into things, because I think the more information you can have, the better. And two birds and one stone. So if you're concerned with duration and top, finding top dead center is a concern, here's how I go about this to avoid that. So let me zoom you in here. Oh, don't jiggle. Oh, over here, over here, down here. There you go. So what I will do, shining a light down in here, if I can capture this. So I will find right where that piston is starting to open up the intake port on the upstroke. Then I come over here and I zero out my indicator. All right, so it says zero. I give it a second to set up. And then I will simply watch for the full duration that that port is open, all the way up and all the way back down to the same spot it was at. So that gave me 172 degrees of intake duration. So I write that down. All right, so now the next thing I do, we go to the exhaust port. I stick my light in the hole. So we're on our way down. Let me zoom you out here. Let me get this off of there. So now, light shoved in the exhaust hole. And you can sort of do this in whichever means you want to do it. If you want to look at where the light's on the other side of the bore, or where it's just cracked open, or if you want to stick the light in this way and watch it, that's fine. Just make sure you're, do you're doing it the same all the time, because there's going to be degrees of variance, and really you need to compare your numbers to your numbers. So, I like where that's at. I come over here, zero it out. Zero degrees. Then I will rotate across the duration of the port, across bottom dead center, back up to the same spot. So that gives me 169.4 degrees of duration. I write that down, 169.4. All right, so now we know our intake and our exhaust durations. One thing you can do, if you wanna just cheat a little bit, Go all the way back to zero. See how the number's going back down? 50, 40, 30, 20. All right, so zero, essentially. That's right where we were when we zeroed it out last, which was when the exhaust port opened on the downward stroke. So now what you can do, you can continue to rotate this without zeroing it out to where the transfer port's open. All right, and you can shine. I shine my light in through the spark plug hole. If there's a decomp up top, I'll shine a light through there. I'll go back and forth. All right, so that says 22.8. So now we know that our blowdown is 22.8 degrees. And you can math out from there, or you can do like I do. Zero it. Rotate back around to where the transfer ports are closing, the upper ports are closing. Same deal, 123.6 degrees. All right, so now we have cataloged and documented our numbers. Come over here. There you are. So, I grab my handy dandy calculator turn it on. So 
we know that we are measuring in degrees, and I know that our wheel works in 180 degree increments. It goes 180 up, 180 back down, right? So our intake was 172 degrees of duration. Simply subtract that from 360, because there's 360 degrees in a circle. 360 minus 172. No, ignore all that. Edit. Um, there's 360 degrees in a circle. We know that 172 of those degrees, the intake port was opened across top dead center. All right. So conventionally, people talk about the degrees before or after top dead center. All right. They'll say, oh, my intake's at 80 degrees. That means that their intake is opening and closing 80 degrees before and after top dead center. All right. So because the intake is open across the top, we can simply divide our duration by two. So 172 divided by two is 86 degrees. Write it down. So the intake's the easier side. We know, all right, and it takes at 86. That's kind of a bit for a work saw. Um, it's probably not going to be real snappy, depending on how that relates to some other aspects of the saw and things. But So 86 degrees, 172 degrees of duration. That gives us the same information, but it, it portrays it in two different ways. It's helpful. So exhaust has 169.4 degrees of duration. Right? Now that's across bottom dead center. So if we simply divided that by two, we would get 85.4, 80, 89 degrees, something like that. Um, but we don't describe the exhaust port as opening before bottom dead center. We describe it as opening after top dead center. All right, so we take 360 and we subtract our duration, 169.4. That gives us 190.6. So the exhaust doesn't have a duration of 190.6 the 190.6 is the opposite of our exhaust duration. So as our saw is spinning across bottom dead center, right, that's the exhaust duration. The amount of rotation on top of the exhaust port, we take that number, that's the 190.6, we divide it by two, 95.3. So that is our exhaust number, 95.3. So we now have an intake and exhaust of 86 and 95.3. Now, we also measured our blowdown at 22 degrees, so from there we could just add 22 to 95 and get 100 and... I'm so bad at math. 117.3 mathematically, all right? But we measured 123.6, so this is a good example of why measuring ports is somewhat of an art. There's a lot of variance in how people do it. So we measured 117.3, so let's take 360 minus 123.6 divided by 2, 118.2. All right, so we can see there that that's how I measure port timing. The reason I do that, I don't have to spend time finding top dead center. Now, if you want to do that, you can take a feeler gauge or one of the mini orange screwdrivers that, if you're like me, you probably have laying around. You can stick it in the intake port when the piston's above it, rock back to where it touches it. You don't want to hit it hard, right? Just ease into it to where it's solid and made contact. Zero your gauge, rotate across top dead center to the exact same spot, and then you divide that number by two, go back to that spot, and then you have top dead center. I have found that this way, while a little bit quicker, not necessarily quicker, it, it helps give me more information or portray the same information in more ways, right? Um, I keep a notebook here of all the saws that I time and port, and it's convenient to be able to go back and compare how they ran, what numbers were in them, what cylinders were on them, how much I took out of the base or the band, um, what kind of band cut I did, or if there was a pop-up, things like that. And it just gives me a, a bigger picture, a different picture of how that works. So maybe this is helpful to you. Maybe you've got one of these and you're not sure how to use it. That's how I use it. So there you go.